Hello church, it's good to be back with you. It's uh, it's always good to be together. Guys, we're starting a new series, a three-week series, God With Us. As we're getting ready for Christmas, this week uh, Julie and I and the, and the kids went out and man, we got the Christmas tree. And then this week I also put up all the lights. It's a little scary at times. I'm uh, a little heavier on that roof than I was 10 years ago. So I'm very aware of, of uh, being up there and putting the lights on. And But man, it, it feels like Christmas. It, it's starting to look and sound like Christmas. When you turn on the radio, what do you hear? You hear the Christmas songs. It's a wonderful time of the year. And uh, we're starting this three-week series, God With Us. You see, God wants to reveal himself to us. Colossians 1.15 says the Son, that's Jesus, the Son is the image of the invisible God, the firstborn over all creation. We all wear different masks in life, don't we? In different places, we, we show different parts of ourselves and, and, and we try and put, often we'll try and put our best foot forward and, 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 and wear a mask that, that sometimes we hide behind those masks, don't we? to disguise who we really are, to protect ourselves. Well, before I told my wife, Julie, that I loved her, I, I knew what we'd been dating and I'd, I'd been showing her only the good stuff and, and trying to hide the real me because I wanted her to like me. And, uh, and so before I told her I, I loved her, I, I had to sit her down and, and tell her everything, everything bad that I had ever done everything that had been done to me, the real me, my struggles, my fears, my concerns. And when I had finished, I went on and on and on. But after I had finished, she said, is that all? I said, yep. She goes, good. And I, nothing changed in her eyes. She didn't have this, this look or the sense of, I didn't have the sense of disappointment. And and so I started sweating profusely and because I was so nervous. And I finally said, Julie, I, I love you. And you know what she said back? She said, I love you too. It was a pretty incredible day. It's powerful to be loved. It's powerful to be known by someone and to know someone else, to really know them. It's a really an amazing thing. When we really know someone, it's, it's life-changing. And God wants us to know him. God wants to reveal himself to us, and he has revealed himself to us. Matthew 1.23 says, The virgin will conceive and give birth to a son, and they will call him Emmanuel, which means God with us. God with us. That's quite a statement. God with us. We're, we're going to get into that quite a bit today. So how do you get to know someone? How do, you, how do you really get to know someone? Well, you have to spend time together. You have to spend time together getting to know each other and, and hearing each other's hearts. And John 14 is the scripture that we're going to spend uh, the majority of our time in. John 14, 1 through 9. And John 14, 1 starts off with, do not let your hearts be troubled. It's quite a way to start out. Why would their hearts be troubled? Well, Jesus has just told the disciples that he would be betrayed by one of them, that he would be denied by them. And, and right before that, he was washing their feet. And now he tells them this and they're, they're like, what? What's going on? And, and so their hearts are troubled. And he says, do not let your hearts be troubled. In other words, you've heard these things and you're concerned. Do not let your hearts be troubled. You believe in God, believe also in me. You see, his time with these disciples that he spent three years with is coming to an end. He's getting ready for the cross. And so he's spending this time with them. He says, you believe in God, believe also in me. That's quite a statement. After three years of spending time with him, you would think they would know him. But they don't. Because they do 
betray him. They do deny him. There's so much that's going on here. Verse 2. My father's house has many rooms. If that were not so, would I have told you that I'm going... I would have told you that I'm, I'm going to there to prepare a place for you. And if I go and prepare a place for you, I will come back and take you to be with me, that you also may be where I am. You know the way to the place where I'm going. God has prepared a place. He's, he's, he's prepared a place for us. It's got many rooms and, and he's coming back for us. He's made a promise. He's coming back. So the question is, can you really trust Jesus to do what he said he was going to do? Is he worth trusting? Is he trustworthy? He says he's prepared a place for us. He said he's coming back. Is it true? Do you believe him? Continues on in verse 5 of John 14. Thomas said to him, Lord, we don't know where you are going. So how can we know the way? Jesus answered, I am the way. Think about that. I am the way. We don't know where you're going, Jesus. So how can we know the way there? Jesus looked at him and says, I am the way. It's found in me and me alone. He goes, I am the way, the truth, and the life. And then he says something even more spectacular. No one, not some people might... Most will, he says, no one comes to the Father except through me. No one. The only way to be with God, to know him intimately and personally, is to know Jesus. No one comes to the Father except through me, except through Jesus. From now on, you do know him, and you have seen him. He's saying, you've seen him and you know him. I've spent time with you. What does it mean to know the Father? You, you can simply know facts about God. You can understand the truth behind those facts. But you can know the fact, you can know the facts and know the truth behind it and still be lost in your sin, can't you? Here Jesus is saying to know means to have a deep personal relationship, a deeper communion with him, to be known and to know, to be personal and intimate with God the Father through knowing Jesus Christ, the Son. Emmanuel, God with us. Verse 8, Philip said, Lord, show us the Father and that will be enough for us. Have you ever said something and then after you said it, you hear the response and you realize how silly what you said was? It's happened to me more than once. Philip said, Lord, show us the Father and that will be enough for us. He's still not getting it. Jesus answered, don't you know me, Philip? Even after I have been among you such a long time, anyone who has seen me has seen the Father. How can you say, show us the Father? Oh my goodness. Philip, don't you understand? If you've seen me, you've seen the Father. Do you want to know what God the Father is like? Look at Jesus. That's for us. You know what God is like. Have you ever thought, God, where are you? Who are you? What are you? Man. He's saying, if you've seen me, you've seen the Father, look at Jesus. We need to look at Jesus. Emmanuel, God with us. Jesus is fully God and fully man. When we look at him, we see, a, we see Jesus, fully God and fully man. How is that possible? I don't know. I don't. I don't fully comprehend that. But I know this. Jesus was thirsty, fully man. Jesus walked on the water, fully God. Jesus was hungry, fully man. Jesus feeds 5,000, fully God. Jesus died on the cross, fully man. Jesus rose from the grave, fully God. 
Emmanuel, God with us. Because he's man, he knows how you feel when you go through tough times. Because he's man, he knows the pain of being rejected, of being falsely accused, of being hungry. When you pray in Jesus' name, you're praying to a God who can identify with what you are going through, all the things that you're going through. Fully, man, he understands our struggles. But unlike others who, I, who can identify with you, because he's God, he can deliver you. Because he's God, he can deliver you from your pain and anger. Deliver you from your brokenness and shame. Because he's God, he can deliver you from chaos in the storm and make you whole. <laughs> Verse 9, Jesus answered, don't you know me, Philip? Even after I've been among you such a long time, anyone who has seen me has seen the Father. How can you say, show us the Father? We can know God the Father by knowing Jesus through the word. Beloved, beloved church, you've seen God. You've seen him. Do you know him? Through the word of God, Emmanuel, God with us. As we read about who Jesus Christ is through the word of God, we see in black and white, the, the scriptures tell us and share with us, and we see the picture of who Jesus is, of who God is. So, where do you stand with Jesus? Do you know him as your Lord and Savior? Just know about him, or do you really know him and are known by him? It's a powerful thing to be known and to be loved. Just like I knew the, the power of that with Julie when... Right, when I told her that I loved her. God is saying he loves us and he wants us to love him back. Do you know him? Do you know his love? If you just know about him, you've missed out. That's religion, knowing about God. Faith is knowing Jesus personally and intimately. If you don't know him yet, say this prayer and the Holy Spirit, God is revealing himself to you right now. Stop and slow yourself down and pray, Jesus, thank you for dying on the cross for my sins. Father, I, I'm tired of living a life of trying to show what, that I have the answers because I don't and I know that now. Forgive me for my sin, God. I choose to believe in you. I choose to follow you with my life. I give you my heart. Thank you. Thank you, Lord, for dying and raising from the dead and going and preparing a place for me and promising you're coming back to take me home. I choose you. I choose to love you back. In Jesus' name, amen. If you pray that prayer with your heart, with your soul, you're in the family of God. And nothing can take you away from the love that is in Christ Jesus. May God bless you and encourage you this Christmas season. When you hear the songs in the stores, when you see all the beautiful decorations, my hope and prayer is that you remember what it's all really about. Emmanuel, God with us. Have a wonderful week. Blessings.